Hello and welcome to another edition of A Vogel's Menopause Mondays and today I'm going to be talking about the importance of water. Now for those of you that have uh, been joining the, these uh, video blogs for quite a while you know that I tend to recommend water for just about every single symptom and I thought I would just explain a little bit more why we need water on a daily basis to help with our menopause symptoms. Now we're 75 percent water but if we don't drink enough then we can become dehydrated very very quickly and most of us don't actually drink enough or else we end up drinking too much tea and coffee and fizzy juices and I will talk about those later on and the interesting thing is that so many symptoms of dehydration look exactly like menopause symptoms so I'll try and remember them all dehydration can cause joint aches and pains it can cause dry skin and itchy skin, it can cause low mood and mood swings, it can cause memory loss and that kind of fuzzy headedness, it can also cause headaches, it can cause constipation and bloating, it can cause fatigue, it can irritate your bladder giving you cystitis like symptoms, it can also cause nighttime palpitations which can wake you up and possibly the most important thing in the menopause is if if you're getting hot flushes and night sweats these can dehydrate you really really quickly and dehydration will then stress the nervous system which will then trigger more hot flushes or night sweats so this particular scenario can become a vicious circle very very quickly so as you can see all these symptoms of dehydration can actually look exactly like menopause ones as well so getting that water into your daily diet is very very important but how do you do it you know I'm probably like um, the, the everybody else I don't like water particularly that you know I'd far rather have a, a really nice cup of tea or or a nice glass of, of juice so it's not not an awful lot of fun now just one very important thing your caffeine and your teas and your other drinks don't count as part of your daily intake so you're actually looking to be drinking one and a half to two liters of plain water every day now this is my plan this is what I do to actually help myself on, on a daily basis to make sure I get enough water in, into my diet most important thing is, is don't have cold water if you drink a lot of cold water it can stress your digestive system which may already be struggling with menopause symptoms as well so what I do is first thing in the morning, small glass of warm water. You can add a little bit of lemon juice to it if you wish. I know some people actually like doing it that way. When I'm in work, I have my lovely pink bottle, which is a big reminder. It's sitting in front of me all during the day. It's a litre bottle and I get that finished before I actually go home at five o'clock. And then I have another glass of warm water early evening or sometimes just before I go to bed. And that's me. I've actually got the one and a half litres into my day. It's really important if you don't drink a lot of water to start introducing it slowly. If you drink a lot of water quickly you'll be running to the toilet all day so you need to give your kidneys time to adapt to this extra water. So start off with one glass extra a day for a week and then the next week take two and and so on and, and just do it that way. I prefer to drink water little and often rather than taking big glassfuls but some people prefer it the other way so you, you'll find what suits you best. Now as for the other drinks tea, coffee, fizzy juices uh, and alcohol. Tea and coffee contain caffeine and caffeine will stir up your nervous system and can give you palpitations, dizziness, headaches, hot flushes etc. Now people do say to me can I take caffeine free tea and coffee? You can, but the problem there is that there are other chemicals in these drinks that can affect you during the menopause. Um, a lot of chemicals in tea will wash calcium and magnesium out your body, which is not what you want to happen at this particular time, both for bone health and mood health as well. 
and especially with decaffeinated coffee sometimes they actually use chemicals to decaffeinate it so you end up with coffee that has no caffeine in it but has added extra chemicals in it as well but what you can do is there's nothing to stop you from drinking herb teas so we've got the avogel herbal tea and the bamboo which is a coffee substitute so you can add these into the diet and the lovely thing about this one is that you can actually take it before you go to bed you can have a nice warming drink um, before you actually retire the one thing to watch with herb teas is that a lot of herb teas now that you get have lots of flavorings in them which doesn't really help so you want to look for pure herb teas if you can fizzy drinks they really need to be avoided and I'm sure that everybody's seen all these articles on the TV about how many teaspoons of sugar is in, in one can of, of, of a fizzy drink and sometimes people then go on to artificial sweeteners. Now from a naturopathic point of view in the menopause we really don't recommend that you take artificial sweeteners at all. They can stress the liver and you don't want that because the liver can be already stressed during the menopause and artificial sweeteners can also interfere with your insulin control and that can already be under a bit of pressure as well because of falling oestrogen. Fizzy drinks and fizzy water also tend to contain high levels of a mineral called phosphorus and phosphorus will wash calcium from your bones which is not what you want because we already have the worry about osteoporosis in the menopause as well. So hopefully that's given you a few tips about how to take water and also just how so important it is in the menopause and the great thing is it's free and drinking water can sometimes ease symptoms really really quickly so you know I just urge all of you have a try you've got absolutely nothing to lose now I'm, I hope to see you next week when I will be talking about why have my symptoms returned in the menopause so look forward to seeing you all next Monday's menopause Mondays